Hello, thank you for watching and today we're going to talk about writing beta code with typed entity. Before we dive in, uh, I am Mateo, I work for Lullabot, uh, we are a um, Drupal agency, uh, we work for large scale publishers and we offer strategy, design and development services and I go by Eoipsa. I, you can find me by that username in Drupal.org and in GitHub. You can find me in Mastodon. And if you are so inclined, uh, check out mateoaguilo.com. Uh, that's my personal website. I post uh, things about Drupal and technology, privacy, and all. Uh, I post my thoughts there. Or you can even go to the Lullabot website and find my bio. So uh, what takes me to this presentation is that uh, I have been experiencing uh, this uh, kind of dilemma lately that uh, Drupal projects can be challenging and coding them therefore uh, it can be daunting because you need to know a lot of Drupalism or frame framework specific concepts uh, like content type, plugins, services, tagged services, uh, when do you use one then you need to know that to uh, extend Drupal's functionality you need to implement hook or maybe write uh, service uh, subscribers, uh, event subscribers, sorry, uh, etc, etc. But we want to do, uh, we want to get all that complexity and especially in our in our business logic we want to be able to do what we need and this presentation is all about the business logic so in your typical Drupal install if the Acme Corporation uh, was to come to you and offer you a project and you were to help them uh, carry on that project using Drupal you would have a part of your code base being the framework Drupal with contrib core etc maybe some theme on it and then you have your business logic which is the logic that you custom build for your customer uh, or for the business right and the, those are things that are typically not shareable things that you wouldn't be able to carry around and from project to project and as I said before we want to do all that com we want to own all that complexity because complexity is a feature uh, we are tasked to build complex systems for clients that have nuanced needs and we need to translate that complexity in the business and how they operate into their digital properties and uh, that is a good thing uh, we are uh, or Drupal is very good in handling that but that complexity needs to be contained otherwise you may end up with a highly costly code base to maintain uh, so it takes a lot of money to maintain that code base uh, because there is so much complexity and it's difficult to know what's going on and I'm gonna propose that there is a better way to organize your code so it's more maintainable and therefore cheaper to uh, to maintain moving forward and that is using a module that I wrote uh, that is called typed entity and so the idea is kind of goes like this uh, you instead of putting all of your logic inside of a myriad of hooks depending on what you want to do uh, if it's uh, altering a form or it's maybe uh, implementing a hook for access or maybe you want to uh, operate with something related to an entity inside of a service you don't put the logic there in those places you put it close to the entity you create a class that uh, represents uh, an entity type and bundle in this case it's a node and it's of type book and in there you put all the logic that you need right and you can even work with relationships in there and then you instead of returning a node you return one of these classes like in this case the author uh, returns another class called person that is not exactly a node but it contains a node uh, if you see like towards the top uh, this class contains an entity so and you operate on that so all the business logic related to a book will be contained 
in this class. So anything that goes to an entity of the type node of the bundle book goes into into here. And then in your uh, hooks, services, plugins, whatever, you just call those methods and your code is much cleaner. And uh, so you know with this just super simple one minute uh, explanation you can uh, get the idea that you put all the business logic regarding to the book into the book class and then in the service you put the logic that is pertaining to the service right and not to the book itself so uh, another another hint is that if you are accessing field data from anywhere that is not the book class or the whatever class uh, it's a red flag indicating that you need to put it in what it's called an entity wrapper and uh, bear in mind that this only applies to entities uh, that's why it's called typed entity uh, but uh, even though this won't help you organize your code sidewide uh, or all of your code I would argue that entity types are the main integration point for uh, custom business logic uh, so you are probably covered I know 80 90 percent of uh, of the time with um, with this approach with type entity so why entities well entities have many responsibilities we use them for many purposes and that is good we should keep using them in in such capacities uh, we render them as content in the screen we uh, use them for navigation purposes to attach SEO metadata that is uh, in relevant for uh, when we put the page in a browser and we decorate those with type uh, sorry with uh, we add hints uh, for decorative purposes we use them to indicate that uh, these and that entities should be grouped together when doing a listing we use them to embed them in WYSIWYX we treat them in many different ways and I haven't listed all of the possibilities that we can do so uh, it is this concept it is not unique and uh, there is even a core patch that is uh, aiming towards having when you do node load 12 now you always get the node class right and that is independently of the type of the node right and with this patch will do and it looks really looks like it's gonna land is that you will be able to specify all right for the type book get this class right and when you do node load 12 it will return you an instance of that class and that is exactly what the bundle override module was doing before uh, and uh, by the way is seeking a commentator so if you are interested in and want to step up uh, you can go to the to that ECQ and uh, offer your help um, the things that I don't like about that approach is are that first it increments the API of the entity objects so what that means is that when you do node load now it returns a node and with that uh, patch in the future you will be able to say no it returns a book and then add some methods to the book class but it will still be extending from the node meaning that you will now have in the book class all of the methods of the node plus your custom methods but your custom methods are going to be custom and uh, it's going to be uh, l possible I was going to say likely but uh, maybe it's just going to be just possible that in the future that you have your custom code written you update Drupal and one of the of the new methods that were included into the node class now collides with your custom logic that you implemented in the book right so that is kind of a risk that uh, may be worth taking uh, I think that this patch is 
really step forward and we need it and it's completely compatible and it will even forward the process of the identity um, but I don't think that is really uh, enough and extending the surface of the of the entity objects will also make testing more complex because you inherit all of the storage all of the uh, you inherit a lot of stuff uh, with it well if you just compose it with your entity as we saw in the early example about the book class uh, that uh, problem goes away another issue that I have with this approach is that this only solves the problem partially and that is because many times we want to have depending on the actual content on the entity we will want to have like maybe an audiobook class uh, the a one that has a custom uh, that has custom business logic a method that tells you how to build the s3 url that contains the mp3 for the audiobook or maybe uh, it's a sci-fi book and that has different business logic attached to it and yeah uh, that's uh, something that this particular uh, approach will not allow while the entity fosters or encourages you to go uh, with uh, those patterns and finally it makes the framework logic that we saw in that slide with black and red backgrounds it makes the framework logic bleed into the application logic and uh, that is a breaking the separation of concerns and it's uh, it's a problem because now you're uh, carrying around all this complexity that comes from the framework that should be tested there and should be left alone it's now in your application code and you somehow own part of that complexity and that doesn't make your uh, code more maintainable and that's what we are aiming for more better maintainability and uh, more quality for a cheaper price the approach of typed entity is uh, it goes like this you create a plugin and you say that this plugin is for entity type node and bundle book right and then uh, you just extend from a base class and you're done and that is calls called a uh, type repository because that is not dealing with a specific entity it's just with dealing with the entity type and bundle and in there what you will put is logic that doesn't apply to a specific instance of a, of a book right it, but you would put something like a find books tagged with whatever and then you pass the name of a tag or maybe logic that applies to many books at the same time or no book at the same time like a create method or uh, maybe a bulk operation that you do to many nodes and uh, that that plugin in its annotation will have the name of the class remember that we had a, a book class at the beginning now it's where we put how where we connect the dots where we connect node and book entity type and bundle with the class that it needs to instantiate through that annotation we'll see an example in a moment so the plugin is called the type repository because it deals it's a repository of wrapped entities and then each instance of it is a wrapped entity so uh, think of a repository like this uh, big rectangle and you pass in a node uh, like this a sm a small uh, rounded corner squares uh, each one of these represents a node uh, with uh, NID 32 12 44 and you pass it to the book repository and it creates a book object and more interestingly you can pass it to a helper function that inspects the entity it sees that it's a book it finds uh, that there is a book repository for it and then it uses the book repository to give you the, the, 
the book class and then the book class you can as we saw earlier we, you can implement the uh, the author method the loan or the method to generate the table of contents and the green check marks there indicate that you can test these right it is, it is easy you just mock your entity which is a dependency the underlying entity the underlying node you mock it and you cover all of the cases where or the special values of content or if it's empty or not uh, stuff like that you can mock that um, via testing and and you're done right uh, you can even go a little bit further and uh, implement customly defined interfaces and that is another key concept so um, if you're taking uh, away anything of this presentation uh, maybe think of this I declare the capabilities or your book class through interfaces so later on you can detect can this class be a book be whatever be a audio recording be an event or whatever does this support this capability that I have declared as a customly defined interface and if and if yes then do this if not maybe ignore it or do that right but uh, that would be the place so the rectangle with wavy lines represents the, the book and the solid red rectangle represents the repository and as we said the repository also a part of being the factory for creating these book objects it also has responsibilities of its own like maybe find all of the books by genre and it returns you book objects and not node objects so um, this presentation is called write better code so let's see some more code right but but before we do that remember that we with this we are trying to achieve some of the solid principles of maintainable code uh, but we are also trying to balance pragmatism in this approach we're trying to uh, be practical about it because because of how Drupal works and because of your integrating inside of a Drupal application uh, there are some trade-offs for developer experience that we're going to be making so if you are super uh, into solid uh, patterns and solid design just take that in, into into account uh, we're not going to be super academic into this but uh, there is a reason we want to be pragmatic we want to make things the easiest possible so we can get the most maintainability out of it so we said this is about custom code and uh, business logic and so we're going to start with how it would start in your day to day your stakeholder comes in and says we have a new requirement and it is very important that all books located in area 51 are considered off limits don't ask just do it and you get right into it uh, you uh, have a custom module called physical media and you implement the node access hook like if it feels perfect you're already using type entity so you check if it's a book and if not you just bail uh, but if it is a book then you get that uh, repository manager that we talked about earlier and in here I'm using the service directly but there is a, a an approach that is a little bit nicer that is a just a helper uh, method that or a helper function that will return you that service and it will give you type hinting for uh, your IDE etc because in IDE the integration with an IDE is also part of maintainability uh, so this example is a little bit dated but we'll see uh, what is the helper method that um, that goes uh, and replaces this but uh, we get the repository manager which is a like a, a global object and we pass it the node uh, via the method wrap and that will return the book and if the book is findable uh, remember we implemented uh, custom because we are already using type entity 
uh, and we are declaring our we are declaring our uh, objects capabilities through interfaces if it's findable you can find it you can get the location and if the building is area 51 you return access forbidden right this is great uh, however there are a couple improvements that we can make and it's that we can still move the entity logic closer to the entity in this approach in this hook implementation there is still stuff that is specific to this client or this ticket or this uh, business need right and uh, we have logic about book right we said that we are declaring our objects capabilities so you we can the we can detect in the future things like if uh, an object can do this and that so let's leverage that and instead of talking about a book let's talk about objects that can be checked for access right that would be more generic and more pertaining to that particular hook and then um, another thing that would give a, a hint is the string area 51 right that is super specific about this project and it doesn't need to go into we don't want our business logic scattered throughout our code base we want it contained right and what we can do is when we want to aim uh, for an, a hook implementation that looks more like this and in here I'm already using that helper function that I told you type entity repository manager which will return the, the same service um, so we wrap it uh, we wrap the the node we here and we're not checking if it's a book or not we're just wrapping it and if there isn't a plugin for whatever that node is if it's a book or if it's a whatever if there is not a repository we return access neutral but if it is we check does this object this wrapped entity support checking for access if so check for its success if not return access neutral and then we can go inside sorry we can go inside of the book class and say book implements accessible interface and that will force us to implement the access method that uh, we have done below and this has a nice kind of uh, side effect or well, it's not a side effect it's an intended effect uh, but it has the effect that you can reason about your code better and you can discover and introspect your code better because now you can click on the accessible interface and see the all the list of the classes that implement that interface in particular so uh, it's easier to uh, to analyze your code from a static perspective and to be more specific uh, it promotes better code organization you uh, when you're writing the code when you start with a ticket you know where to implement the logic then you just call that logic from whatever hook but you know where to implement the logic so the code is organized and is predictable and the developer that comes behind you knows where it will be and you don't f you don't waste a lot of time trying to find where that thing is happening right it uh, promotes better readability uh, because you are writing your custom interfaces that are designed to be reusable across objects and uh, the uh, authoring and discovery sorry um, the authoring and the discovery I already talked about that uh, the class testability we uh, mentioned that uh, in a in an er earlier slide you can now go and check uh, and test all of the edge cases of your access checks and see if those perform as you would expect uh, it also improves the static analysis uh, which kind of piggy piggies back on the discovery um, and any further scope reuse 
So, how does it work? Because uh, we are here, probably, we are all developers that want to write better code. And if you're like me, you know, to fully understand the concept, I want to learn how it's built. So let's take a look at that. Just a sec. We said repositories are plugins, so this is the plugin. Uh, you just uh, put the annotation name, the type repository, we specify, very important, the entity type ID and the bundle, and then you have a key called the wrappers. And it has an annotation uh, with class with variants, we'll see in a sec what that means, but the important part is that the fallback here it has a reference to the book class that will contain all the business logic that applies to a single book instance. And and that's pretty much it. Uh, then you can start implementing the business logic specific for the repository. Uh, we said uh, find by tags and the book operations, etc. cetera. Uh, but as you saw earlier, um, we often attach special behavior uh, or business logic to entities with certain data or that are specific or special in a way or another that you don't have a way to uh, encode statically. Things that the depend on an editor filling out certain forms, uh, sorry, certain fields in a certain way. Uh, I don't know, maybe calling an API. Uh, what if we want to add business logic that is specific to books that are best sellers, but uh, you only have sell selling data from uh, an external API, right? Um, that will be uh, like an uncommon case, but still something that you might need. Uh, the uh, kind of good example of this is the audiobook, as I said before, and how you construct that URL. Uh, or if you already served that URL to that user, uh, stuff like that, that is specific to audiobooks and not all books. So how do we deal with that? Well, we have a way uh, in the wrappers key. We said that we have a class with variants. The class is a book, but the variants are the different cases that we saw, like the different, uh, the diverging points of uh, business logic, like Maybe it's a sci-fi book and has speci specific business logic or a book with sounds. Um, then you can just specify the classes. How does type entity know when to create a bestseller book or just a plain old book? Uh, it does it via an applies method. So all variants in order to be eligible for being used. They need to implement a specific interface and that interface will force you to put this applies method. Uh, so there, uh, what you will do is just return to or false. I am, uh, uh, I have an entity with a context in general and you check for properties or things in that context, properties in that entity, fields or whatever, and you say, Yes, this applies for that method. Sorry, for the class that uh, that houses this method. In this case, if the field genre is science fiction, yes, this is a sci-fi book, and that's contained in sci-fi book.php. So the book repository will inspect all of the variants in order, by one by one, and it will check for the applies method. And if it does apply, then it will return a book like still with wavy lines, but in this case, it's a little bit different. It's not a rectangle. In this case, it's a, it's a round, uh, the circle, right? Uh, still similar, but not exactly the same. Now, sci-fi book may implement different inter interfaces that book does not, right? And at this point, you could be 
tempted to to think and it would be awesome if uh, if you did because that means that I have uh, inspired this uh, this idea or maybe you already had it uh, but you could be thinking could type entity implement hooks for me like imagine that there is a hook entity foo could type entity provide a hook entity foo implementation that checks if my typed entity is fooable and if it is then foo the bar with the data that provided that was provided right and do that for all of the entity hooks that are known to humanity and the answer is no and yes uh, no because uh, type entity doesn't want to replace the hook system right uh, type entity aims to improve your or to help you improve your code base for maintainability to have better quality that is cheaper and a cheap, cheaper in in the terms of that takes you less to keep running add features modify and uh, in general is easier to work with that's what I mean by cheaper and for that what I think is that you don't need if type entity was to do this and implement hooks for you and replace the integration point from hooks to interfaces that you add to your wrappers you to your entity wrappers uh, type entity would need to take care of all of the features that all of the hooks add and also what are all of the hooks right do, do we take into account contrib which contrib uh, the ones that are the top x thousand or uh, just a couple of them right so those are things that maybe we don't need to to do because you want your hooks and your implementations to be as simple as possible and to adapt to your particular use case just do the simplest in your code base and design the code in a way that if you need to change it in the future if you need to evolve it or make it more complex then you can just jump into that code you know where it is you know what it's doing and then you can change it and the goal is to make this you know where it is you know what it's doing also known to future developers that uh, may not have the same insights that you have when you wrote this I said no and yes and the yes part is that as we said we render entities uh, as content in the screen and I will argue that that is the most common use case that we do with with entities and that combined with the fact that there is a natural way of checking for variance uh, and we call when in the rendering process of an entity we call those variants we call them view modes right um, those two facts make me think that we could do that uh, we could do that and provide a special type of entity wrapper called renderer and it is just the same thing but it it is focused only on rendering logic and it's not incompatible with uh, with wrapper with uh, regular wrappers in fact uh, renderers will benefit from having regular wrappers so let's see what that means uh, we are currently supporting these three hooks uh, entity view alter pre-process and entity display build alter because those are in my opinion uh, the most commonly used ones um, but if you disagree pl please feel free to create a merge request or a patch and we'll add support so we go from this from having to implement these hooks to uh, use renders so how do we declare renders just like we do with uh, with wrappers 
we replace or actually uh, we have wrappers we do the same thing and we use the renderers key and then we put the uh, location of the classes uh, or the fully qualified names of the classes for the renders in, in this case and here I kind of replaced the, the wrappers with the renderers in your case 90% of the time that you have renders you will also have wrappers but I wanted to show how this changes very little uh, like if you understand wrappers you understand renders or at least how to declare them and then you basically uh, create let's say the teaser for the book and you extend from a certain render base class and instead of using the applies method now the base class has an applies method by default that uses the constant view, mo view mode and it checks if the view mode that Drupal is requesting to render the entity teaser then this class will be used right and then it will call for the pre-process it will call for the view alter and as you can see these are very simple functions uh, and this is kind of uh, the intention of the the example here but this is very easy to test right this is much easier to test than writing a test for the for the hook implementation oops sorry for these hook implementations uh, you just write the, the test for the pre-process method and we can mark any of the dependencies or the uh, arguments that you pass into it so in summary and this is coming to an end this presentation uh, kind of invites you to use type entity as a way to organize your business logic uh, the custom logic that you write for uh, the business that you work for uh, be your client or be your uh, maybe you are the, the developer that's working directly for the end client it invites you to encapsulate the business logic into a separate class that contains a reference to an entity those are called wrappers it invites you to add variants in case that you have that need uh, things like special data maybe that checkbox that says this is the editor speak or the staff favorites or whatever you you call it uh, those could be called variants and handle the uh, the logic differently and this will kind of make it easier to understand what are the requirements just by looking at the code base which is something that is very difficult to convey if you don't work in uh, in any specific way and uh, also has the concept of implementing hooks services events uh, in a generic way by checking for interfaces in the wrappers uh, instead of just assuming and implementing right there and finally uh, we talk about the concept of renders which are just a kind of a specific type of wrappers that uh, are kind of a sibling of wrappers that use those concepts for render specific business logic because that is so common and uh, it's so much easier to deal with just renders than uh, glob everything inside of uh, of the uh, entity wrapper and use variants for wrapper for renderers uh, using view modes so the goal is to make your your entity business logic more testable discoverable maintainable and readable and that's it for me i hope you enjoyed the presentation and tada